It was one of the greatest nights in American Olympic history. And Gabby Douglas and Allie Raisman helped create it. Today, they'll be watching to see if there is the next one, a gymnast that's capable and ready to dream about Rio. This is where they once were, at the AT&T American Cup. Get the gold medal. It's pronounced Worcester, and it's in the center of Massachusetts, New England's second largest city. And this is the DCU Center, the site of the 2013 AT&T American Cup. And this event is the most important annual international event in American gymnastics. It's a totally new Olympic cycle. And right in the middle of it is Simone Biles. And what is going on with Texas these days? We have two American gymnasts from Texas. This is Al Trowick, surrounded by gold medalists, Nastia Lukin and Tim Daggett. Andrea Joyce is also along. And I know, Tim and Nastia, that you love what Simone can do on the vault. This Look, was a few minutes ago. She is just off the charts on this event. I would say she's the second best vaulter in the world to Michaela Maroney. And you got to check this out. She does not jump off the table. She explodes. Oh, she's, it's unreal. Absolutely amazing, and I think Tim talking to her earlier this week, her one problem was keeping her energy in control. She doesn't struggle one bit to make this amazing vault, but she does struggle a little bit to keep that energy in control. And now she is live on the uneven bars. How does she fare here, Nastia? This is the event, if anywhere, where she struggles just a little bit because of that power that she has. You can see in every single skill that she does, she kind of muscles it, which means you know she struggles to just keep that fluidity throughout the routine. She has the lead after the first rotation. Canada is here. Italy is here. But like Nastia just said, if there's a place where you know things can go wrong, it's definitely here. This is Jordan Weber's move right there. Does it very well. She actually now will do a lot of the same things that we saw from Gabby Douglas. This combination right here. This is the trickiest part right here. Can she connect this together? And she does perfectly. And talking to her coach earlier this week, she says she doesn't even know how to do the pack salto by itself. So if she didn't connect that, that could be a huge problem. But she did it just perfectly. And this is as good as they could ever have hoped for. This could be the new face of American gymnastics. <laughs> Meanwhile, a face in London, an Olympic medalist, Danell Leva. He and his stepdad, a big yes. part of things. He's had an off day, and he's off physically. Let's go to Andrea Joyce. All right, Al, I spoke to Danelle just before the meet, and he told me that he's feeling pretty good today. Yesterday, he started feeling queasy during the afternoon practice, thought it might be a stomach bug or something he ate. Well, when he got lightheaded, he told me that he decided it would be a good idea today to be well hydrated, got some extra fluids, some extra liquids, and uh, he did, as you said, struggled in the first rotation, insists he's okay, but Al, look out. One thing he did say to watch out for, this whole situation has given Yin an extra shot of adrenaline. Is that possible? <laughs> For his stepdad who does the rhythmic clapping, who does the hugging, who does the yelling, who just has so much enthusiasm. There he is, in Alvarez. He is a cheerleader, a coach, a dad to Danell Leva. He lives Danell's gymnastics. As Danell is doing it, he is feeling it. Know what's going to happen? Danelle's going to have a next career. He'll be a CEO or something, and, and Yin will just go sit in the office and watch him be a CEO. <laughs> so this is hard for Danelle. Two and a half twist. And I'll tell you, since he struggled on his opening event, Danelle has been. <laughs> he has been doing as well as he possibly can. We go back to the floor exercise, and it started early and never got better. And Tim, you told me you've never seen what we're about to see at this level. Yeah, exactly. And you could see it right from this first pass right here. He lands very low, big step backwards and out of bounds. And then this is the end of his routine. He is exhausted, and he knows 
that if he had continued that, he just, it would have been bad. He would have landed very badly. And Nastia, he has come back in this event. How do you do that? How do you erase that? You know, I think that, like we heard Jake Dalton telling him a little bit, little bit earlier, that you just have to forget about it. And that's the most important thing a gymnast can do, is if you have a mistake, you have to move on to that next event. As hard as it is to forget about it, you have to start from scratch. Okay, the men are now halfway through. The standings after the third rotation, another American, Jake Dalton, is in the lead. Then Leva gets a 15.033 on the vault. And we will be constantly trying to figure out what these scores mean. Yeah. <laughs> Simone Biles on the uneven bars of 14.8. And this is the system that we've come up with. The green means your deductions were less than 1.2. That's great. Yellow means, uh, be careful, you know, that might not be good. And two is not good. Not good at all. And what Donnell was, he was in the green there for sure. That was about as good as he's capable of doing without any question. That's his lucky towel. He has it every step of the way. Frequently, you'll see him bury his head in it. Now, we go to uh, Germany. Now on home, look at that, look across his chest there. That he had that at the Olympics, but they made him cover it up, the German Federation did. With what? Uh, with some type of concealer. It says, pain is temporary, but pride is forever. It's in English, too. Same fault as Donnell. Nicely done, just about a carbon copy of Donnell's ball. Takes a step forward instead of off to the side a little bit. But. You know, and it's interesting, after the London Olympic Games, Marcel has become a national hero in Germany, winning the silver medal in the all-around. That's something I know that entire country is so proud of him for doing. And, you know, Tim, he told us it hasn't been easy getting back into the gym, trying to find that motivation now and setting those new goals. Yeah, you know, but it's, it's funny. Most of the athletes that competed in London, this is their first event. And for him, he actually competed in a German league. He has been on the floor, competition floor, 12 times since London. That's a lot. I mentioned uh, Simone Biles' score. We'll see where it stands her. 14.8. Marcel Wen of Germany, a 14.9 on the vault. And now we go to Vanessa Ferrari of Italy, who was in London as well. 2006, she was the best gymnast in the world, the all-around champion. Really has reworked her gymnastics. She's good on bars, but it's not her strength, actually. In London, she tied for the bronze medal in floor exercise, but with all those crazy tiebreakers, she was awarded fourth place. Oh, <laughs> those legs out on that landing. So, we're just getting started in the 2013 AT&T American Cup. Norman, Oklahoma's Jake Dalton is the leader, and he's getting set to go. The AT&T American Cup is brought to you by AT&T Rethink Possible. By gymnastic standards, it was a blowout. Six tenths of a point, an all-around gold medal for Nastia Lukin. A dream that was born in a gym in Plano, Texas, and who knows, there could be another dream born then. I'm Al Troutwick with Olympic gold medalist Nastia Lukin, and we'd show you Tim Daggett's gold medal, but it's all <laughs> grainy and stuff. Tim, all the gold is rubbed off. Right, where are we in the Olympic calendar right now, and, and what's the importance of this event? Well, it's a huge importance. It really kickstarts everything, believe it or not. There have been so many great gymnasts that have come to this event. In the year after the Olympic Games, Jordan Weaver, she won it as a little kid, 13 years old. She was a world champion in the all-around the year before the Olympic Games, and obviously a member of the Fierce Five. But there's a gymnast, Caitlin Ohashi, in this competition that is unbelievable. She is capable, was capable, in my opinion, to be an Olympic gold medalist on the balance beam back in London. And her coach, 
is your dad. How does he do it? I don't know. I sometimes wonder that, too. He's been through so many Olympic cycles already, and it's so amazing to be able to see him back out there in just the exact same person, no matter what the success is that he's had. So to see her, now, to see him now uh, with Caitlin is, is pretty cool. Nastia, what do you think was better, that dad said something at a key time or didn't say something at a key time? <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting question. I think, you know, I think every athlete is so different, too. You know, I think Caitlin, um, you know, she needs that little extra motivation and maybe that extra work that will help her before she gets on the bars. You know, I just needed a little come on and, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so we have two new American faces in the women's gymnastics team for the United States. And we have two familiar faces from American gymnastics. And here is the Oklahoma Sooner, Jake Dalton. And he has had a tremendous day today and he's great on this event. Triple twist! Wow. Just the small hop on the landing, but that was stellar. That's the highest value vault we've seen today on the men's side. A couple other guys have done a two and a half twist, but he does this all the way around. Another half twist and just a small hop on the landing. This will get a gigantic number. Nastia, I'm sure you can relate how hard it is after the Olympics to do the exhale and then go back to the sport. Absolutely. And t speaking with Jake earlier, he said the tour, the Kellogg's Tour of Gymnastics Champions that we all did together, 40 cities, that he said was his time off. I'm not exactly sure if that was anybody else's time off, but for him, that was kind of his way to relax, but also stay in the gym a little bit and took a little vacation and was just right back in him. Jake gets a 15.433. That feels big. And now Victoria Moores of Canada. She actually started very well on vault. She's a very powerful gymnast. Has been battling a back injury. She has torn muscles on both sides of her spine and her lower back. The coach of Ursadi told me it's been very challenging. She dealt with it through the Olympic Games. Orthodox dismount. Kind of a little bizarre, Nasty, to see that, right? Yeah, I have to agree with you. But, you know, she also did say her routines are a little bit watered down. It is the year after the Olympics, on early on in the season, so she's still getting back Indian into that Olympic competitive spirit. So let's check in again with Jake Dalton's score. It's a green. It's good to go. It's a 15.433. So he's in the lead. And that's very good to keep him there. Yeah, I, I would say that that's going to distance him from the rest of the field. Brazil is here. This is Sergio Sasaki. You know, he's really good. He's really good. He's got a lot of ability. He needs to clean up a little bit, but he's young and uh, he does actually now some of the hardest Brazil. gymnastics Sergio that you'll see. And we're about to see the same thing that we saw a few years ago with the British gymnasts. This is all about the big buildup in every way with the infrastructure and the athletes and the knowledge of the country. Absolutely. Arthur Zanetti from Brazil won the gold on the rings. He says that that has shown all of Brazil that it can happen to them too. Big ball. Obviously, huge mistake when you put your hands down and you show any type of support whatsoever. That is a full point deduction. But you just flash back and, and you look forward to those moments that the Australian gymnasts had in Sydney, mm -hmm. the moments that the Chinese gymnasts had in Beijing, the moments that the British gymnasts had in London. Those are life-altering things that you never forget. And this is all about the big build-up to that. Waiting on the score for Moors of Canada. And it is a 13.566. Really not her strength. She's phenomenal on floor exercise, and you see the yellow right there. That's caution. Not so great. Gabrielle Jump of Great Britain. What a sweet little girl, I'll tell you. Or she just missed, right? Yes, she did. She's a little too young, but uh, she was actually part of an Olympic ambassador program. So she and her coach were selected and got to get into the village, the 
GB House, the Great Britain House, and watched the all-around final, said it was just a phenomenal experience. Oh, that, that was far. Fingertips catch. You know, and she does have a little bit of a lower start value, but everything she does is just so clean and precise. Huge dismount. Yeah, I really like her, and I really think her, you know, it's certainly she's young, it, but she looks young. She looks lo young physically and doesn't look tired or beat up. I, I think she's going to have a very bright future. Of course, trying to follow in the footsteps of gymnasts like Elizabeth Tweddle, who won a medal for Great Britain on the uneven bars. And Sasaki's score on the vault is a 14.2, so that's... Yeah. Well, let's be careful. On vaulting, too, those numbers are, you know... Because you're only doing one move, so he lost now almost two three. full points on one. You know, later we're going to see how, since the Olympics, they've made the balance beam even more difficult. What about <laughs> this apparatus? Well, yeah, they've made this. Well, what they did is they took the maximum scores that someone could attain, and they lowered all of the vaults by one full point on the men's side. That would have scored one point higher. This is the same vault. Very difficult. Fantastic. That is big time. Just huge air. Last year, what's your feeling about them constantly making it harder? <laughs> it's an interesting question, you know, because now looking back, I guess, over four years ago, this code has just changed so much. And I think, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Are they trying to take it back to where it was, or are they trying to make it harder? And I think it, it really depends on how you look at it. And, you know, Oleg right here, they, he suffered what he calls the greatest and biggest robbery of the entire Olympic Games. And this is what happened. Kohi Uchimura from Japan was competing on Pommel Horse. And look, this dismount, disastrous right there. And at that point, Team Great Britain was in silver position and Japan fourth place. Look at the money, 300 bucks to file an inquiry because they didn't give them the dismount and then the flip-flop, and they're just relieved, and they are disheartened beyond belief, and that, that was brutal. I have to tell you, that was brutal. And Tim, to me, of all the things that were watched by all the millions of people, that that money shot did not go viral yeah. to the point that some other things did blows my mind. Yeah. You know, and actually, they have a new rule on pommel horse. I wonder why. A, a lot of people call it the Uchimura rule. And on pommel horse, you, you were, the only event, you really couldn't repeat a dismount. And now, if that happened again, Uchimura would have been able to go up again, do his dismount, and the controversy would have been mute. And after the controversy, it was still a huge success for the team from Great Britain, and Christian Thomas was in the middle of that. And then we had a chance to look over, and he was sitting with the princess and watching the gymnastics, and oh boy, he's getting set to do a vault that just wowed his entire country. This was one of my favorite moments of the Olympic Games. This is ginormous. Look at the height, double pike, and wow! the charts. Such a big kid for gymnastics. I get chills watching oh, this. Oh, absolutely. And there he is. And they sat together for a long time. That's over, pretty cool. Over an hour. And by the way, Nastia, you are not allowed to use the word ginormous. It's trademarked. <laughs> Got it. I'll add that to my list. <laughs> He's actually going to do, Kristen is going to do a different vault. He said that, you know, the lead up to London, he did so many of those vaults, and it's very punishing on the body. You know, he developed some tendonitis in his wrist, and he's going to do a big vault, but not quite as dramatic as we saw in London. Oh, and that's too bad. He actually does that vault significantly better than that. It almost looks too easy for him. Yeah. But he really didn't get the block off of the table that he typically does. He was, you know, a good two feet lower than he usually is. Back to the uneven <laughs> bars. And here is Nastia Lukin's dad's latest protege, Caitlin Ohashi. Does she have it, Nastia? You know, it's definitely hard to tell four years before the Olympic Games. But as of right now, if the Olympic Games were this year, I'd have to say she has it. Yeah, she would be on the team, I would say, without a doubt. And the thing that I love what she said is, you know, watching the Olympics, she said, at the Olympics,
they, the team, the Fierce Five, looked so calm. I don't know if I can be that calm. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You trained with a picture of Carly Patterson on the wall. She trains with a picture of both of you on the wall? <laughs> exactly. That is crazy. <laughs> Dad. Oh, I just said her dad. I'm so used to saying Nastia's dad. There is Valeri Lukin. Now, he's not just a, a phenomenal gymnastics coach, but also uh, a tremendous athlete for the Soviet Union, Olympic gold medalist. Who's got more, you or dad? Depends which kind. <laughs> he's got two gold. I only have one, but I, I beat him in the medal count. Now, Caitlin has some really tricky elements that'll happen a little bit after that release that was great right here watch this full spin on one arm a little bit off on that she's going to do another one right here eventually she's going to want to wow that was far too huh she's going to want to put all of that stuff together and she is capable of doing that she's even capable of doing more which is you know, amazing to know that four years before the Olympic Games, she's already has this great start on the uneven bars. <laughs> Not a great routine for Caitlin. She's done much better, but it was a good save. She was completely off yeah. on two of those skills. Did you see? Did you see your dad when she landed and took that big step? His head went back. His arms came up. The usual. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've seen it a million times. But there is only one color that goes, and that's gold for Valeri. So these are those full spins on one arm. You see the little bit of leg separation, and she doesn't quite finish in a handstand position, just a little bit past. In the dismount for Caitlin, she only did a full out, but she is capable of doing a double-double, a double back with two twists. So this is something that she's going to have to look ahead towards the next four years of adding that to her routine. See that step on the landing really is where he wasn't happy. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Every single 10th counts. Yeah, exactly. And he knows that, and Kaylin knows that as well. Yeah, I, I've said it before. You know, there, if, if you're a Lucan, there's only one color that counts, <laughs> and that's gold. Yeah, and last year, you know, time travels faster in gymnastics. It's three years to the Olympics. Three years, you're right. You're right. The pressure is on. It's a tradition for Americans to do well at the American Cup. That was Simone Biles exiting stage left there for a moment. She has a nice big lead over a point over her teammate, Caitlin Ohashi, but the balance beam could be the great equalizer. The Americans also lead the men's race. Jake Dalton is in front. Danelle Leva had some missteps in the floor exercise, and he is well back. As we continue here live in Worcester, Massachusetts on NBC Sports, we look forward to hearing from two women who are with us, Gabby Douglas and Ali Raisman. They will reflect on everything that's gone on since their fabulous gold medal performance in London after this. This happened. Gabby Douglas, Michaela Moroni, Ali Raceman, Kyla Ross, and Jordan Weaver. Please welcome Captain of the Fierce Five and Needham's own, Ali Raceman. Why not the bowling? Why gymnastics? <laughs> Delegates and guests, please welcome Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Riding aboard the pep rally flow, we're proud to present the Fierce Five, this year's Olympic gold winning women's gymnastics team. Fierce Five, Fab Five, whatever, it was successful, and Gabby Douglas and Allie Raisman join us now. I know what my favorite moment was, guys, but of all the things you've done since the Olympics, Gabby, let's start with you. What was your favorite? 
Oh, that's so hard. We've got a lot of amazing opportunities. Suck it up. But... You're a gold medalist. <laughs> <laughs> I would say meeting the president. I mean, he's so cool. He's such a um, nice guy down to earth, and it was really cool. We went in his Oval Office, so I think that was pretty, that was pretty cool. You're off of Oprah's list now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, what about you? Um, I'd have to say the same thing. I mean, we've done so many amazing things together. I think just getting to know all these girls and spending time with them, it's been so amazing. We're best friends, and its it's been so much fun. I'm so thankful to have them as best friends. Now, I know we all did the tour together, the Kellogg's Tour of Gymnastics Champions, a 40-city tour. Tell us a little bit of what you guys have been up to being here at the American Cup today. Does it have an itch for you guys to be back out there competing, or are you enjoying what life has become now? Um, kind of both. We're loving the break because we've been pushing ourselves for so many years and just being on the sideline, me and Allie feel, feel so weird not being out there, being competing, but we're just resting our bodies. We um, watched the Nastia Lee Yukon Cup yesterday and it was fun. So um, we, I think we have the itch to get back, get back yeah, out there. Definitely. Hey, Allie, you know, one of my favorite moments of the entire Olympics, not just gymnastics, was the final event for the team competition, and you were on floor exercise. You hadn't even finished the routine yet, but you could see it on your face. It was just, it was perfect, and you knew it, and you solidified the gold medal. Can you try somehow? to put that into words for us. Um, sure, I can try. It was the most amazing night of our lives. It was just so magical and amazing. We were, I don't even know, it, I'm still speechless thinking about it. And every time I hear the national anthem or every time I see the clip, it gives me chills. It was so amazing. We had so much fun that night and it was just such an honor to be at the Olympics, such a dream come true. You know, Ali, I, I remember so well a few years ago saying, here's Allie Raisman from Needham, Massachusetts. This is a home game for her. Tell us how you came of age in this building, in this event. This was my first senior international competition. I remember it. It's so crazy to be back here. Um, I'm so proud all these girls are doing amazing. And it was just, I remember I was so nervous, so inexperienced. And I just remember I stuck a beam routine and I was so excited and so happy. And I, I just remember that it was kind of like the beginning of uh, new dreams coming true for me. And of course, Gabby, when you're winning that gold medal to some people, it meant a, a lot more than just winning a U.S. Olympic gold medal. It meant so, me so much to so many people. Tell me what's the most important thing someone said to you about what you pulled off in London. Yeah, just being at the America even, this is where it all started. And people would just come up to me and say very nice words, like, thank you for all that you've done. You got my girl started in gymnastics. And at the end of the day, it leaves a very warm feeling in my heart, knowing that I went to London and inspired young girls. Well, we are all so proud of you, Gabby, but what are your plans? Are you moving back to Iowa with Coach Chow and starting training? Or? Definitely. Probably uh, late spring, hopefully in May, I get back into the gym and start training again. And how about you, Allie? Uh, well, first I'm going to uh, be doing... you got a little gig coming up, yes, I heard. So I don't know. Yes, I'm so excited. It's a show I've, I've never heard of. But. You've never heard of it? <laughs> I'm so excited about that, but then after Dancing that I will... Dancing with the stars, right? Yes. All right. I'm very, very excited. I'm a huge fan of the show, and I can't wait. Um, but after that, I will definitely begin training at the end of the summer, so I'm really excited about that as well. Guys, you looked great in London, and you look great today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Now, what kind of a comeback can Danelle Leva try and complete here today? He's on the uneven bars, and he's still paying for what happened on floor exercise. Uh, parallel bars. Uh, he's still paying for what happened on floor exercise. Yeah, absolutely. But since floor exercise, and, you know, frankly, the mistake was so big, and he looked so exhausted, I really didn't know if he was going to be able to fi finish the competition. But that is not Danelle Leva's style. If you remember back to the World Championships before the Olympic Games in Tokyo in the all-around finals, he smashed his face on the bar and knocked a tooth out. And the thing that he was most upset about was they wouldn't let him finish the competition. So he is not a quitter, and you should never count him out. He's a long way back at this point in time, though. Does some really big underbar skills. Rework his parallel bar routine a bit. He is struggling a bit. This is most challenging element in the routine. A little bit over on it, but. New dismount for him. Double front, blind landing. 
And what a fight. He, you know, you can just, you, you watch his gymnastics, and if you know him, you can see how physically exhausted he is right now. Nasty, how hard is it for you to analyze and, and look at this on an apparatus that you never really competed on? It's weird, <laughs> it is, right? It is. It is a little bit difficult. I was even talking to my dad earlier and saying, when I was competing, I never, ever focused on men's gymnastics. So the past few months, I've you know really been researching a little bit and learning more and asking him questions. You know, who better than to ask my dad? <laughs> Pretty good resource. <laughs> a second look at Victoria Moores from Canada. Now, what did they do to the balance beam? Well, yeah, they <laughs> they blew it out of the water. You know, we've always talked about connection value, and they've really made it. So if you don't go immediately from one skill to another, they take away the connection, and sometimes that can be so critical because you've got to do two leaps in a row on the balance beam. And if your arms swing backwards or forwards, do not get that connection, and it's a full five tenths of a point off. Anastia, we're going to get into this a little bit more, but it, to me, it seems as though they've almost ruled out human nature. You know, I was kind of thinking the same thing, because when you have these jump connections and even the acrobatic connections of the two skills, it's almost impossible to do a skill without swinging your arms. So then that means you have to eliminate certain combinations and eliminate skills from your routine. So that right there is a connection, and I think she probably pulled that off. I would have to agree. I think she definitely got that. But you're used to seeing two jumps, and she decided to do a split leap after as her second one, which doesn't require the arm swing. You just kind of go with it. She's going to be close to overtime here. Nope, she makes it. It was a good routine. You know, it's uh, really not one of the most difficult that we'll see today. We'll see something from Caitlin Ohashi that is just. So let's show you what was allowed and what is not allowed anymore. So take a look at the arms right here. At the end of this element, they're going to be up, and she's going to take them and swing them down and up again. That got her connection a handful of months ago in London, but no way nowadays. And here's another one right here. You see the arms swing back. They want the arms already back so that you can immediately like rebound. But how do you generate momentum without doing that? And this is what we just saw Victoria do. She didn't move her arms. She just continued yeah. moving. But so this is something that. Yeah, you know, but look at, looking at that though, again in slow motion. Uh, I don't know. That was. It, it, they're going to be very, very strict. Danelle Leva got a 14.833, and as it is in many sports, rules are made by people who've never done what they're <laughs> ruling about. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. Marcel Wen of Germany. He is a big guy. You know, he said that. You know, he, and you see the German flag in the background right there. He's got some supporters here. Supporters um, in the right places. Yes, exactly. You know what? He, he's he's famous in Germany, but he says it's it's really bizarre. I am most famous in Hong Kong. And he doesn't know why. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know why. <laughs> he's half Vietnamese. And he says that every day during the Olympics, people said he was all over the press, the media capable of a very big dismount on the parallel bars. A full twisting double. Got him a silver medal in London. Does just a double pike. A good routine. I think like many other competitors here, it is so early on in the season. They're not throwing all of their hardest skills and tricks right now. Just trying to get through this weekend and look ahead towards the future of the World Championships later this year. His coach right there, Valeri Belenki. I think a teammate of your dad's, yep. right, Nastia? Part of the unified team. Gold medalist in 1992 and then Traveled yes. <laughs> to Germany and very energetic coach. We spotted him dancing on the floor earlier this week. Yeah, he's a riot. He's a riot. He was a great, great gymnast. Individual event medal at Worlds. Competed for Germany in 1996.
and has been stayed there. He is okay, now the, go. he calls it the second coach of the German team, so like the assistant. Does a, a great job. So Massey, we're looking at Jake Dalton here, and I think we touched on it before, but how about a little bit more about just after the Olympics being here in this spot? How hard is that? It's extremely hard, and I know firsthand, you know, having tried to do that myself, and it's not easy because you just want to break after the Olympics. I know, you know, he spent many years, and he was also at the University of Oklahoma competing weekend after weekend, and then, of course, World Championships and the Olympic Games, but he said he was more motivated than ever to get back in the gym and start competing again. But right after your Olympic gold medal, you didn't compete in the next American Cup, did you? I did not. No, I competed at the National Championships. So as Championships. you watched it, well, you know what is very interesting? For the American men, their Olympics, in a lot of ways, you know, people will get mad at me for saying this, but it was a disappointment. They went, and in the qualifying rounds, they led the entire competition. They were number one. And then in the team finals, it did not go well. They ended up in fifth position. They thought for certain they would win a medal, and they thought they could challenge for a gold. So he's looking for a little redemption, to be honest. Marcel Weyland, 15.133, and check out Jake Dalton's biceps. They look like they're photoshopped. <laughs> he's in first. Yeah, and he's he's good here. Actually has a move that's named after him. He was submitted at the 2011 World Championships. If you're the first athlete to compete the skill in a Worlds or an Olympic Games, you have the opportunity to submit it, and if they think it's worthy, They'll call it something like a Dalton, and he'll do it. <laughs> a little bit off on that, but holds on, and that's, yikes. Moving a little too quickly. You know, it's really tricky, especially when all these skills are so back to back, there's no room or even time to fix anything. And this is a Dalton right here. Nicely done. Well, great landing. You know, last thing the judges see, he had some errors in the routine, no question about that, but Jake Dalton having a tremendous competition at the American Cup. Still to come, Caitlin Ohashi from Team USA and Simone Biles, her teammate today, as they battle out to win the 2013 AT&T American Cup. As we go to break, we'd like to take this moment to mention the passing of someone from the USA Gymnastics family. His name was Jason Simpson, and he was a huge factor in the creation of this event and instrumental in the growth and development of this event. Jason Simpson, missing from the USA Gymnastics family. We're back in the DCU Center. Yesterday was the fourth annual Lucan Cup for junior gymnasts. Alex McMurtry won it. We congratulate her, but sometimes it's not who wins that matters in the future. Andrea Joyce has more. Oh, Al, you're absolutely right. Sometimes the kids who aren't on the podium are the ones that end up making the biggest splash. Consider 2010, the first Lucan Cup, fourth place finisher, a little known 14 year old named Gabby Douglas. Well, last night it was 12 year old Sydney Johnson Sharp. It was her turn. And, you know, she didn't place great and she didn't do well on bars, but boy, when she got on the floor, you could not take your eyes off of her. Her mom and coach, uh, 1988 Olympian Brandy Johnson, told me that Sydney has always been like that, poised and so much personality out there clearly loves the spotlight and clearly ready for her close-up and Al out of all of the spectators out here the one most interested Marta Caroli and that matters a lot it does yeah she she actually couldn't keep her eyes off of her and she just has it you know we are constantly looking for that that next generation and Marta Caroli she had holds all the strings and you know, she was very impressed without any question. She's actually traveling to Houston for a developmental camp that uh, Valeri Lukin is in charge of the developmental program on the women's side at this point. Now, see, uh, we've seen Marta say so many things to inspire the gymnasts. Did, do you remember one time, one thing where she said something that really got into your brain? Or is it just all, all good? You know, I think it was 
before the Olympic Games, maybe a year or two before when I was really struggling in the all-around competition, and she told me, do not give up. Do not just do the bars and beam your strongest events. Keep pushing through and do the all-around. You are meant to do this, and you will do it. Parallel bars. Sergio Sasaki from Brazil. Seven there for four rotations. For the men, of course, it's six. And, you know, really, this, this kid has a, a very bright future. Just not quite ready yet. Needs to clean up a little bit, but honestly, he does. His gymnastics is extremely difficult. I asked him what it would be like, you know? Could he imagine what it would be like competing in Rio in 2016? I said, would it be good pressure or bad pressure? And he said, I'm not quite sure. It could, it could go either way. I did it almost a century ago, and it went pretty well for me. <laughs> I told him that, too. He said, I hope so. Actually, he has really been struggling around January. His gym caught fire where he trains, and it, it just went up in smoke and has been a gymnastics nomad with his teammates, Patrick Barbosa and Diego Hippolito. They have been traveling all around Brazil to just find a place to work out. Olympic Committee is helping to rebuild that gym, but he doesn't know when it'll be done. And you see, it's, it's just his feet. They're, his feet aren't great, as you can see. You know, they should be extended a little bit more. He also, I think, with such a dark color like that, his socks should match his pants. And I've always wondered yeah. that. You know, we never wear socks, but I guess yeah. a nice pair of green socks well, would help. If you, if you have, if you have great, great feet, great toes naturally, you know, sometimes it's okay because it shows it off. But he basically wants to hide it a little bit. He should, he should be wearing green socks. So in second place, here's Caitlin Ohashi. And you're telling me that she can make up this over one point deficit on this apparatus? Absolutely. She is, as I said at the top of the show, world class. She's good enough. This routine right here is good enough to have contended not for a medal in London, but for gold. Right here, big. Very nicely done. And this right routine is capable of a 7.2 start value. And watch this. This is incredibly hard. She's going to do a layout with a full twist. She does that so well and so consistently. I've seen her in training twice a day since we've been here. I have not seen her come off the beam on that. But Tim, this is the combination that she could possibly get five tenths bonus just for the combination itself. She and puts she her won't foot down. put her foot down. And I do it again right here. She should get the connection there, but will not obviously get that one. And well, she looks a little bit. Uh, she's definitely a little bit nervous, and oh. you know she's only gotten a 6.4 start value at the national team training camps this year. But that 7.2 is almost a full point higher than any of her other competitors. Now, as you mentioned, start value, it's then added to the execution score, so that could be at the best a 10. So 10 plus whatever the start value is for the score. Double pike dismount here. Pretty <laughs> solid routine. Yeah, still going to get a very good score, but she can be actually much better. Okay, so what does that face mean? <laughs> that means it's okay. <laughs> Not great, but you know, of course you can always do better, but I think they'll take that. I mean, this is her first senior competition. She's just turned, you know, a senior competitor, and she's used to compete at international competitions, but it's all different when you're a senior competitor now. So this is one of her biggest tests right off the top. Very difficult. It's called an Arabian. And you see that little arm swing. This is going to be interesting to see if the judges will actually give her that connection. I don't think that they will. But this, she gets the connection. Wow, look at her feet. They were a little bit off, but she saved it in the air. Look at her toes. 
wrapped around that beam, how many times you see these athletes, they can just hold on with their feet. A great double pike dismount for Caitlin, but she's actually capable of doing even harder. She does a full in dismount, which you know will give her even more bonus points to that start value. So the capability for Caitlin Ohashi on the beam is extraordinary. So when you talk to Caitlin, Nastia, so have you talked work? about what inspired her to get to this point? I mean, was it Carly? Was it you? Was it someone else? You know, it's funny. We never really talk about oh, those. Oh, come types. on. How do you not talk about that? <laughs> She's the type that just, she doesn't really like talking about her gymnastics. She likes talking about other things such as what color she painted her nails. Yeah, and exactly. She's quite a little nail artist. She'll yeah. Even at one during the London Olympic Games, she painted Olympic rings to support the Fierce Five. So very into it all. Here's Oleg from the IF. It's very tricky right here. And he is way off. I can't believe he was able to save that. The thing this kid has going for him is, per his size, he is strength to weight ratio. Very, very good. Remember, Ukraine had one of the saddest days. You oh. Have oh. oh, my gosh. And that, you know, right there, at least a point off in deductions. His dismount, a big step forward. And it kind of seemed like he was just trying to save the routine the whole entire time, one thing after another. Wow, that, that's very unusual for him. He, you know, he was in the American Cup last year. He had some mistakes, but you could see that this young man has had a great future, was tremendous in London, and really, I saw him in training here. I thought he was going to do much better. This, though, watch, he's going to go to one bar after this skill right here. This is called an underswing or a peach to one bar. Very, very difficult. Gets completely crooked. Look at his body. He's supposed to be totally turned this way and somehow is able to do this full spin out of it. That, a, a great save. And then more trouble. This right here, just look. The legs are apart. The knees are bent. That step, that step, that step, that step. Every single one of these are deductions, at least a point off on that one element alone. And remember, the Ukrainian men was, were the team that got knocked down with that Japanese protest that we showed you earlier. So they went from a bronze medal, oh wow, to fourth place, oh brother. Ohashi on the balance beam, 15.333. And you see that the start value that she received was a 6.8. So that is four tenths lower than her potential, but still a pretty good start value. I think maybe the highest of the entire competition on the balance beam for sure. I mentioned that controversy with Ukraine that we talked about earlier, of course, involved in that was the team from Great Britain with Christian Thomas. And for more, we go to Andrea Joyce. Well, Al, earlier you talked about Christian Thomas getting a chance to meet the Duchess. You know, she sat next to him. And Christian told me earlier that when the security guards approached him that night of the event finals and said that Kate wanted to sit next to him, he absolutely panicked. He texted home immediately. His mom said, sit up straight, watch your manners. His dad said, don't worry, it's probably a prank. Well, Christian was so nervous, he told me that his palms were sweating like crazy. He had to keep wiping them down in his pants because he knew he was going to have to shake her hands. Of course, Kate Middleton shows up. She completely is charming, chatty about uh, gymnastics, but he can't remember a lot of it because his phone was buzzing nonstop. Seems there were a couple of people out there watching the whole thing unfold on TV. And Andrea, that was for a long time, right? I mean, it wasn't just 10 minutes. Oh, she was there for like a half an hour. Well, that, that would shake up just yeah. about any guy. Yeah, and he's going to Buckingham Palace. He wanted me to know that in June. He said that should be the highlight. And where does he live? Uh, he lives about 40 miles from a very odd named city called Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's across the pond, however, not where he's competing right now. A little bit off here and there on this exercise. He really is, he's a working class gymnast. It's, uh, you know, he's very big for gymnastics and it makes it a lot harder on certain events. It helps him on the floor exercise in the vault, but on P-bars, pommel horse. Whoa. But he, I tell you, he is such, he's, he, he never gives anything away. He, 
a lot of gymnasts in that situation would have taken a quick slide backwards, but he's very patient with the landing. Well, he showed me everything you would ever want in your favorite athlete when he delivered for his team in London with the home crowd. I mean, that was, what he did, things were slipping away. They needed a big number, and bang, he delivered it. Absolutely. To go to the balance beam. One more time for Team USA, Simone Biles. You know, I talked to Marta Caroli right before the competition. And, you know, I asked her about Simone yesterday. She really struggled on this event in training, and she said yes. She's a little bit overwhelmed, and she looked a little bit frazzled. You know, the skills are there. It's just the consistency and that confidence that comes with experience. This is only her second time competing on a podium, her first time just being last year at the national championships. Nastia, in a big spot, when you were about to mount the beam and you looked at it, did you hate it or did you love it? I think I hated it more than I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but then as soon as you land, you learn to love it again. So, for example, that connection Definitely would, not, would a connection. not get those extra tents. Why did they do that? You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they want to keep challenging the gymnasts. And, you know, in some ways, it will help differentiate the athletes that can actually do it. Oh, Jesus. And we may have a change in the week. Well, like I said, Marta thought she looked a little bit rattled. And she said that the training is so regimented and Simone really isn't accustomed to that type of work. And it started to, to drain on her and to fatigue her a little bit. This is a very big dismount. She's got to have her head together. Full twisting double. Nicely done. Just the big hop back on the landing, but you cannot erase. A fall from the beam, it is one full point. Her coaches. You hear her say she buckled her knees a little bit, which means she may have just rushed and got a little too excited because she thought she had it and just, you know, wasn't exactly quite there. So this is an acrobatic series here. She'll do a laid out somersault here. Pikes down a little bit. I, I just think that, I don't think she got the rebound that she needed to. Her whole body was a little bit too low. She was a little under rotated because if, it, if you look at it at this angle, she looks pretty straight until she really bit. takes off. I guess a little bit yeah. she is a little crooked, but yep. still under rotated. She could have saved that if she had a little bit more air time, I yeah. think. They're going to smile through the moment right now. She needs to get a 14.266 to maintain her lead in the 2013 AT&T American Cup. They just breathe, and that's how it stood there. And then I was like, oh, I have to get back on the before they go I can't imagine that she will be able to reach that number. She, not only did she have the falls, but she, she had a lot of areas where there were little balance checks. But this is what I like about Simone. She falls off the beam and still has a huge smile on her face because for her, she knows this is all about the experience. This is about getting out there, and she still has a few more years to gain that experience. And Biles gets really hit. A 13.133. That means that Caitlin Ohashi has the lead at the American Cup. This looking guy, he knows what he's doing. We'll take a break. We'll be back in Worcester, Massachusetts, here on NBC Sports. We're back live at the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts, the home of the Worcester Sharks, affiliate of the San Jose Sharks of the NHL. And there is a very special man, the father of a woman sitting next to me, Nastia Lukin. Caitlin Ohashi has taken over the lead after Miles to the right fell off the balance beam. So a major shift on a major mistake. Meanwhile, on the men's side, 
Jake Dalton has been in control. His lead is over 1.5, and that is after five rotations. So there's only one more performance that he has to get through. And he might as well lead by a mile. Yeah. On the high bar, then El Lebo. We've talked about it before, but now, well past two o'clock, he's still thinking about something that happened about two hours ago. You know, that happened. He, he was very sick, you know, vomiting. And as people, we all know, waking up and going, no, I cannot be sick today. It just happens. And he was a little bit unlucky. Since the floor, though, he's been really good. Big, huge release right here. He's going to do another one right here. That one was laid out. This one supposed to be in a pike position. They're pretty darn close. And he just barely got his hand on the bar. Tim, was it on that move where he broke his tooth? Well, no, it was that move, but with a full twist, oh. actually. So, it, uh, but that, that will solidify his placement. A full point off, he'll lose the element. You know, sometimes I wonder when you do water down your routines a little bit, don't exactly do the most difficult. You kind of relax on yourself, and I feel like he's probably can do the skill in his sleep, just like he just did right there. You know what? He, this doesn't matter what he's doing here. He could just finish the routine, but no, he's going to go up and do the whole rest of the exercise. This is not the last that you'll see of Danal Leva. I can assure you that. He's very, very popular. Fans of this sport know of the story of coming to the United States and all of that. And then finally finding a way to get himself to the Olympics and winning a medal. Still to come, the two American leaders in the 2013 AT&T American Cup in Massachusetts. A lot of focus on what will happen in 2016 in Rio. That'll be a South American Olympics, and that means if you're from Colombia, that's a big deal too. Jorge Hugo Geraldo Lopez. That would be four for him. <laughs> he's in. He's been in three already, and he's been in a lot of American Cups. I said to him the other day, I said, I think you've been in this at least six times. And he's like, no, no, no. No, not six, not six. No, I said no, five. No, no. He goes, I think it's only four. I think it's five. I don't know. I guess you kind of lose track after three or four. <laughs> Very classical looking gymnast, though. Why can the men do it longer than the women? Uh, it's just, you know, it's strength to weight ratio, you know, obviously. That's, that's what it comes down to. Too close on that. Actually, a, a Gaylord flip. And this is his fourth American Cup. It's so hard to keep going after you lose momentum, especially on something like the high bar, where it's just so continuous that you don't get a break. You can't even take a little breather. You just have to keep on going. Oh, boy. Yeah, just barely, barely got his hand. Huge deduction on the landing. That's a full point. A nice looking gymnast. A very nice guy. But that's going to be, the score is going to be brutal. Women finishing up on floor exercise. And this is Gabrielle <laughs> Jupp from Great Britain. And what I love about her is her artistic component. And you can really see it. The I'm choreographer. Sure and it's not just somebody put the routine together for Irene Kasarova is the choreographer for this young lady and she works with her three times a week 
week in, week out, and it really shows. You'll see it right at the top. emphasized in this new code is the artistry. And like you said, Tim, you know, she doesn't maybe have the strongest tumbling, very decent tumbling, but something she can improve upon. But that artistry is there. And you know, it's, it, it is beautiful. And it's beautiful to watch somebody be so engaged into the routine where she actually looks like she might be even playing a character. And her coach would say, yep, you're right. We'll take a break in the 2013 AT&T American Cup as the women finalize their story on floor and the men are on the high bar. Looks like we're gonna be ready right away for you. Christian Thomas of Great Britain vying to uh, finish perhaps on the podium here at the American Cup in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Al Troutwick along with an American Cup champion and Tim Daggett, year after his Olympic gold medal and a multiple champion in Nastia Lukin with Andrea Joyce as well. We're heading toward the big conclusion. Christian Thomas to the high bar. You know, I had a chance to spend a little time with him and asked him, you know, outside of winning that bronze medal as a team, what moment do you most remember and cherish? And he said, coming into the arena for the first competition and the lights and the sound and the roar of the crowd, he said every emotion that he has ever experienced shot through his body like electricity. If you remember the production that they had in the arena before every event was spectacular. Phenomenal. North Greenwich Arena. Very nicely done there. Oh, and that was a huge error. And he was supposed to connect it right into that, and he's actually done that move already once. That's really gonna hurt him. You can only do a skill one time for credit. You'll get no credit for the second one. He said, you know, I took a month off after the Olympic Games. I really could have used another month. <laughs> but when it mattered most, Kristen Thomas was there, as was the entire. Great Britain team, Lewis Smith, of course, winning a silver on the pommel horse as well. But not a great day for him. Yeah, he won't be happy with this score. Meanwhile, it comes down to on the floor exercise, a showdown of the two Americans, Simone Biles and Caitlin Ohashi. And we will have that live when we come back to Massachusetts as NBC Sports coverage of the 2013 AT&T American Cup continues after this.
you're looking at Elizabeth Seitz of Germany, and this is a very big performance for her. She is on the fringe of second place, and she's barely holding on to third place. And going home and saying you finished on the podium at the American Cup would be really sweet. And I asked her, she said, this is a big, big competition. Ooh. Dangerously close to out of bounds. I did not see a flag go up. Looks like it went with the music. You know, I guess it's everybody's style is a little bit different. And, you know, I think that's the hardest part about this new code is really focusing on that artistry and finding something that's not just appealing to the judges, but that also fits your personality. And I'll tell you, she really, I think she opened up the door because Victoria Moores is right behind her in the standings, about six tenths. And she is phenomenal on floor. Before the London Olympic Games, I thought she could contend for a medal even. We'll see her in a little bit. If you watched what the Ukrainian men went through in London, you, you root for a guy like this to have a nice moment today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and he's certainly capable, but the wheels kind of came off in the last event on parallel bars for him. Interesting story, that team. One of the leaders was a guy that has competed in the American Cup and done quite well, Nikola Kuksenkov. And he is now in Russia, training for with the Russian team. Another little bit of a problem there. His dad was coaching in the Ukraine, but both of his parents are Russian, so they decided to leave. That hurts the Ukrainian team quite a bit. I really thought, though, that Ole would have a better day. I thought that if somebody opened the door just a little bit, he would be the one that could sneak right in there, but it just didn't happen. That did, though. Beautiful dismount. Floor exercise and Caitlin Ohashi. This is her AT&T American Cup to win. Absolutely. She stays on her feet. I would say that really almost impossible for anybody to catch her. Meanwhile, Sykes has to hang on here, Tim, with a 13.566. Yeah, she definitely opened the door. Brand new routine for Caitlin. I know she was really excited about this routine because she said she even gets to smile a little bit in the middle. <laughs>
played it a little bit safe there at the end. She was supposed to do a full twist, but, you know, I think that might be just exactly what she needed. Yeah, they really can't take a huge deduction. Valeri not so happy, but I, I, I don't think she was playing to say, I think that she just got a little bit rattled, didn't feel that yeah, she, she was. Yeah, she just didn't have that energy at the very end, and, you know, she didn't want to end this great competition with a fall, so she chose to do the front flip instead of the full twist. You can see she is a little bit upset because she knows. And she's going to hear about it in about <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need words. Just an expression will do it all. But really shouldn't jeopardize it. And she's actual, actually capable of doing a double layout as her first pass, and that pike full in would go in place of the double pike. So she has tons of upgrades coming that will be, you know, hopefully there for the summer and if she makes that world team later this fall. She had a big lead. Uh, she had a very big lead, but, you know, she opened it up a little bit, and Simone, l remember her on vaulting. If you're great on vaulting, you're typically a tumbling powerhouse as well, and she could very well be the most powerful gymnast I've ever seen on floor exercise. You know, women. Tim, what's interesting, between Simone and Caitlin's floor team, they actually have the same plan start value. Their difficulty is actually the exact same. And they are so different. She, you'll see her coming up next, Simone, throwing these amazing skills, and Caitlin gets it all in the connections. Right. Pashi is a 14.4. That means Biles needs a 15.533 to take the lead. Which is a <laughs> on-floor exercise is just a Herculean task. Huge score. But really, you're not going to believe how powerful this young lady is. And that is the primary reason that she is here in Worcester. She is raw talent. Well, Tim, you know, I think of women's tennis, and you can see a lot of players. And then you look at Serena Williams, and you say, whoa, she's just got a different type of muscular definition. And, and that's the case here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it's about getting experience. Marta Corley told me right before the competition, she's a bit of an enigma. And, you know, we don't know how it's going to go. But regardless, she's going to take this, and she's going to learn for, from it. She said that the regimented training kind of wore her down mentally before this competition. Watch this. Oh, so much power. So much power and I see no yellow flag once again, which means that she stayed in bounds and doesn't get that additional deduction. No problem showing her personality here. Watch this one as well. Fantastic future, without a doubt. But in the present, she will not be the American Cup champion. That will not be enough. That young lady right there, Caitlin Ohashi. It's not official, but it really is. I don't know how you managed to stay inbounds on any of those tumbling passes. I like that she came off the floor with a smile. Yeah, she's to say, I can do this. She's I'll awesome. Get it. She is awesome to watch. <laughs> So we'll get the official scores and see what's what, but it doesn't seem as though it's possible. Perfection was a maybe. 
Now Jake Dalton needs just a 12.633 to regain his lead in this rotation. Combination right here. Nicely done. And this American Cup, if he's able to hold on through this routine, it will go a long way for a little bit of redemption for Jake Dalton, who was on that team in London that was favored to win a medal. Possibly challenged for the gold, and that was fantastic. Everybody came in talking about that young man, the bronze medalist, Danell Leva, a little bit under the weather, and Jake Dalton has done has made remarkable strides on one of his weakest events, the pommel horse. He was able to hold on there and had six solid routines. What an awesome thing after an Olympics to be able to still compete at that level. And Bile score is a 14. That means Caitlin Ohashi is going to join the long list. All the great American gymnasts who have won this event. Now at four, size four, Canada, Victoria Moore. Victoria Moore is of Canada, fourth after the third rotation. Might be a little bit of an opening here. Yeah, she she can't challenge for the top spot, but a 14.23 could give her the bronze, and she's capable. Beautiful. going to be close here. You know, we've seen Caitlin Ohashi get a 14.4. She needs a little bit better than a 14.2 to do that. She's a tremendous tumbler. I like her dance. You know, it's, it's going to be really close here, though, I think. Elizabeth Seitz, though, she's the one. She opened up the door. <laughs> With her coach, Elvir Sadi. And now Marcel Wen of Germany wraps up his day. Marcel Nubian. He needs a 14.63 for second place. So he has great anticipation here. With that top spot, Jake has put that out of reach. One thing he, Marcel has really improved upon is his overall form in the exercise. This, however, was supposed to be done in combination. And you see those bent elbows? Here we go. Big release right here. Oh, I, I don't think he even had his fingers around the bar. But you see those legs coming apart and a little bit sloppy here. Well, it was good. It was good, and it was an amazing 
Amazing struggle to grab that bar a couple of times there. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's competition of the 2013 AT&T American Across the floor we go to Andrea Joyce with Caitlin Ohashi. Andrea? All right, Al, Caitlin, congratulations. Caitlin told us the other day this is the biggest competition she's ever been in. So what's it like to be standing here as the champion of that competition? Um, it's kind of overwhelming. It's like amazing and unbelievable and just so exciting. Well, you took the lead after the third rotation, but you didn't look very happy when you finished up on floor. What was going through your mind and did you think that maybe you had let it slip away? Um, well, I saw the score before floor, and I saw that I was a point ahead. I just knew I had to hit a clean routine, which I thought it was pretty clean. Obviously, there were mistakes, and I didn't do what I exactly wanted to do, but it's still early in the year, and so I just, I thought I still had a chance. And you will go down in history now with all of these great names for the American Cup. What was it like for you to actually compete out there? You told us the other day that, you know, this is your first senior international competition. You only found out a couple days ago that you were going to compete here. I mean, was it fun? Was it scary? Um, it was a mix of both. I thought it was going to be a lot more nerve-wracking, but I guess I was just so confident in myself this coming up, so I wasn't too nervous this meet. So. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, Al? Great job by Caitlin there. We'll hear from Jake Dalton when we come back to Worcester, Massachusetts, and have the final standings. And there was a change in the top three women. The AT&T American Cup is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. Back in Massachusetts, we've assembled the final standings. Caitlin Ohashi wins it. Big difference between her and her teammate Biles. And then Victoria Moores slides into the third spot representing Canada. It was a blowout on the men's side as well. Jake Dalton wins over Vernayev of Ukraine, and Marcel Wen was able to hold on off the high bar. We have a very special performance here, and everybody is all excited to see Kyla Ross of the Fab Five on the balance beam. This is not a competitive performance. It's just for everybody to enjoy. She was actually supposed to be in the competition, and they changed that. You see the ankle that's taped right there, the, her right foot. She has an injured heel that she's not quite come back from completely. And you know, she really was the only one of that gold medal team that decided to really get right back into the gym. She did a couple of tour spots, but basically she went back to work. She said that the Olympics, they, they motivated me to get back into the gym and continue. And in London, you know, she only did a few events for Team USA, so that was another motivation for her was to get in there and get stronger in the all around so she could contend at something like the World Championships later this fall. Hold on to that. Actually, though, in training, she has looked phenomenal, to be perfectly honest, uh, in a lot of ways. As good, if not better, than she was this past summer in London. And I think for Kyla, the main goal this year is, you know, to get back to the national championships later this summer, and of course the world championships, which is going to be an individual world this year, which means there's no team competition. It's all going to be the events and the all around. So, you know, this could be a great breakout year for Kyla. Just the dismount, a double back. And just like Kyla always does, I'll tell you, she has one of the nicest gymnastics looks on the planet. Let's hear the men's champion thoughts now, Jake Dalton with Andrea Joyce. I told Jake Dalton that uh, the Olympics are still three and a half years away. A couple of weeks ago, you win the Winter Cup Challenge, now the American Cup. Talk about this uh, amazing start to the season for you. Uh, thank you, first of all. Yeah, no, it's just, you know, it's part of the plan. I just want to get back into, you know, routine shape and get out there with some confidence and start contending with the top guys. Well, the top guys, you beat two of the guys who were on the podium in the all-around in London, so that's a pretty decent start. You guys had a disappointing fifth-place finish as a team in London. What do you think you learned there that will help you as you get ready for Rio down the road? 
It's just extra motivation. Every day in the gym, you know, you sit back and realize you didn't really accomplish exactly what you wanted to. Um, you know, it taught a lot about, you know, myself and character and just keeping your head held high and looking forward to the future. All right, we wish you the best of luck and congratulations. Thank you very much. Al? All right, Andrea, so Caitlin Ohashi wins the 2013 AT&T American Cup. Our congratulations to her and Jake Dalton for winning. Coming up next, it's the third round coverage of the Honda Classic from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. That's going to do it for Tim Dackett and Nasia Lukin. I'm Al Trowick, so long from Worcester, Massachusetts, and the AT&T American Cup. Golf is next, right here on ABC's, NBC Sports.